Hey everyone, so this is just a short series. I'm going to be showing you how to take apart your PR900 or your uh, Diana Storm Rider. I'm also going to be showing you in the next couple of videos how to put it back together and how to really optimize it, make sure you get the best performance out of it. So, first step obviously, let's remove the accessories. Next up, we're going to remove the stock. I'm going to start off by first removing this uh, trigger guard here at the back. This is a 4mm Allen key. Very simple, and you'll see as we go along, this gun is very, very straightforward. Nothing complicated about it. Right, so there the trigger guard's off. Then we're going to take our 3mm Allen key. I'm going to move the next two screws. It holds the stock in place. On the original PR900, it would not be possible to do this, you'd have to first remove the gauge, but on the newer ones, definitely, you can uh, do it just like this. You'll see the gauge goes right through the stock. Alright, so there we have it, stock removed. You can now see the gun is uh, pretty accessible. Gonna, next, we're going to remove that uh, end cap at the back, and then we'll be able to remove the hammer spring as well. So let's get to that and all of this can be done without releasing the pressure yet uh, once we go further than this we're definitely going to have to release the pressure as uh, then we're going to start to be running into some safety issues if we don't do that Very important to note in this next step so obviously now we're going to be releasing the air if you've got a Diana Storm Rider then your pressure gauge is going to be actually situated in the front of the rifle uh, where this one it is actually the full port that's sitting in the front of this tube so if you've got a Diana Storm Rider you're going to need to first remove that uh, pressure gauge which is sitting in the full port position of the PR900 first so when you release it you'll hear the air will start to come out just allow the air to come out just be nice and patient don't rush it give it a chance so you're just going to crack it open slightly you'll see the pressure on the gauge is going to start to drop as it drops just leave it let it go um, but yeah we definitely we need to remove this pressure before we can move on to the next steps. Alright, now we're going to split the breech and the pressure tube. First we need to loosen up the barrel band. And uh, one very important point that you want to note, you'll see I'm going to actually do it just now, is uh, when you, before you remove the barrel band, just make sure you mark it where you want it to be, because um, otherwise when you're assembling the rifle again, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. To see where exactly the barrel band must go 
you also don't need to worry because whatever marks you're going to put here will not be seen or visible from outside it's going to be covered by the stock so don't worry too much so here i'm just using a pencil and you could use a little dab of tipex or something like that as well so whatever you want to use you can use just to give us a position when we need to come back and put it all back together there you can see it very nicely there's just one very small screw left it sits underneath your magazine or your single shot loading tray and uh, I think this is a 1.5 millimeter allen key and this is going to be the last screw to release this breech from the pressure tube Just something to remember when you're busy with this whole process, make sure you do not lose the pins in the trigger. You'll check every now and then, I just have a look at the trigger, just make sure everything is there. Alright, so now we've got the pressure tube, next we're going to remove that transfer port. And uh, this is one of the major differences between a sub 12 FPE and a full power a PR900. Alright, next we're going to remove the hammer now. And this is often a very big problem on the PR900s and the Storm Riders. When you buy them new, this little screw on top of the hammer tends to come loose. So definitely something you want to check for. When you put it back together, you can even put a little bit of Loctite on there to keep it in place. So yeah, just check out for this. I've heard of this quite a few times. This block that we're going to remove now actually fills, fulfills two purposes. It uh, allows for the stock, the one mounting screw of the stock to be mounted, but it also holds the high pressure valve in position. So just uh, be careful with this. You definitely want to make sure that you don't damage anything on this little block. The next part of this job is uh, the major difference between the PR900 and the Diana Storm Rider. So on the PR900, this is where we have the fill port. On the Diana Storm Rider, this is actually your pressure gauge that's in this position. So just remember this, if you've got a Storm Rider, this step would need to be done right at the beginning where the pressure gauge is removed on the PR900. So this is how you would release the pressure on a storm rider Okay, so as you look down this pressure tube, you'll see all that's left now is only the um, pressure gauge valve or port as well as uh, the HP valve. So how are we going to remove this? Just going to take something nice and soft. You can use a P3000 
piece of aluminium or a piece of wooden dowel will also work and just important to note this can only be removed in one direction as there's those indents that you've seen there this prevents it from being removed in the other direction so yeah just uh, going to need probably a couple of lengths as you see I've got a couple of different uh, pieces that I'm using here so the first piece was an aluminium rod now I've got a wooden dowel that's covered in rubber and now I've got another piece of wood and you'll see we're going to push everything out the bottom now there we go there's the pressure block and then we've got the high pressure valve that's coming last Alright, so we remove that piece of wood. Now you can see right through the whole pressure tube, everything has now been removed. The gun is basically completely disassembled except for the trigger. And we're not going to work too much on the trigger today. So there you go. There's the pressure gauge block. And Alright, and then here's the high pressure valve, very simple, very very similar to the CP2 or the CP1 or even the Diana Chaser and uh, the Storm Rider has got also basically the same valve inside. Right, so there you have it guys, this is uh, the whole PR900, completely stripped down, Diana Storm Rider, very very similar to this, barring the um, full port and the pressure gauge which are swapped around. See you guys next week, happy shooting and remember keep safe.